Hi guys, welcome to my YouTube channel, Dave D Fishing. I'm David. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you the super basics of how to go about catching to tog from your kayak. Again, super simple, just using a dropper loop rig with a small breakaway at the bottom with probably two to three ounces of weight. I'm going to be fishing around boulder fields, but I'm going to show you some basic types of structures to look for when you're out and about looking for these fish. A lot of this stuff applies whether you're fishing from shore or kayak. So I hope you guys enjoy the video and I hope you learned something. Here we go. Okay guys, so let me show you the rod and reel that I will be using. So the rod will be a black hole challenger bank. It is a seven foot three rod rated up to four ounces medium action. Seven foot three for me is the ideal length. Seven to seven three, seven six is okay because I can swing the rod all the way around the kayak if need be to fight a fish. Um, the reel that I'm using is a Shimano Tranks 301, is a left-handed version, and it, it is spooled up with 20 pound Power Pro braid, which seems to work for me. When I'm fishing from a kayak or a boat for Tatog, generally you're gonna be fishing right over the structure, and the brunt of the abuse will go through the leader material and the leader material is just 50 pound trilene cheap monofilament you don't need to spend a ton of money on it hooks you can get away with um, cheap walmart stuff if you really want to i generally start with a 3.0 hook um, and then i'll move up to a 4.0 if needed now if you spend the extra money to get say gamagatsu octopus hooks they keep their points a little bit better they're less prone to rusting I go through a lot of hooks when I'm to tog fishing because the points get bent as I'll show you later in the video. The dropper loop setup that I have allows me to easily change out those hooks. There's no point in fishing with a hook that's blunt. And if the point of the hook isn't really grabbing my fingernail, it's no good to, anymore to me and I'll throw it out and I'll get a new one on there. But um, pretty good setup and actually you might, I might get asked why I would prefer a bait casting reel over a spinning reel. So I'm using a super basic rig in this. It is a dropper loop on 50 pound mono and I have a surgeon's loop on the bottom and then I have a short section of 12 pound monofilament as a breakaway in case the fish gets snagged in the rock. I can more than likely recover that fish if that were to happen because the sinker would have broken away. So. Again, back to the benefits that I feel come with using a baitcaster is a lot of single hand operation, which is useful in a kayak. So I can engage and disengage the clutch with one hand with this. And it allows me obviously to keep my left hand free so I can handle a fish or if I have to deal with a snag, something comes up, you, you really never know. You can use spinning reels. A lot of people prefer to use spinning, spinning reels only, shore or kayak. I will generally use this setup with the bait casting reel on a kayak because it's a, more of a safety thing I feel and it is more comfortable. When I'm fishing from shore, I will use a spinning reel. Um, that's really all I got as far as rod and reel combos. So now we're gonna get to the fishing and I hope you enjoy it. And I try and show you, again, super basic stuff. You can use, get into, using to tog jigs and that type of thing. That's where spinning reels actually come into their own because they open and they just sort of pour a line out, which is a good thing. But um, yeah, I'm gonna keep it simple. Enjoy the video. If you have any comments, anything like that, just throw them down below. Um, all right, let's get to the fishing. Places like this boulder field in front of me and also rock jetties are a great place to start looking for fish as these rocks, this structure help house their prey and also offer the Tatog a place of refuge as well. Tatog also rest in these rocks at night and they are daytime fish only. Other places to look for Tatog are around bridge pilings. I do have some older videos of me fishing around bridge pilings. Don't ignore wood structures like this either. Seawalls are another great place to look for Tatog, especially concrete walls or slab walls as their porous texture help hold barnacles, mussels, and these walls often have cracks in them which allow crabs and their other prey items to hide. Guys, when you're tatog fishing with no fish finder um, on your kayak, so if I'm not getting a bite in the first five minutes, I'm moving whichever direction about 50 feet or so. So I just did that. I'm gonna try here, I didn't get a bite over there. 
So I'm gonna give it a whirl here and just work my way around um, to sort of keep my placement in the general area that I wanna stay fishing is I'll pick a landmark in two directions, sort of triangulate myself. So I'm picking, there's a boat, white one over there, the one to the left, and then I'll pick a rock. So the third rock over from the right, that directions. So it helps keep me in the general spot. It's not exact, it's not precise, but you know what, it works. Couple little taps right now. Waiting for that big tug. Oh, I missed him. Swing and a miss. So you can see I lifted up the rod again once I missed the fish just to check if there's weight telling me there's bait still on there. If there is, um, put the rig right back down to the bottom. Nine times out of ten that fish will come right back to try and grab your bait again. But sadly this time a scup just came over uh -oh. and might stole be the show. One. Oh, that feels different. That's a small one. Oh, nope, Scott. So, got a little bait stealer right here. Back he goes. So, another little trick is if you're running low on crab, um, you can give if you still have your bait left from a previous bite, give your old bait a squeeze and it'll get the juices flowing and you just toss it back down. Oh, that was quick, probably more scup. So with experience, you'll eventually be able to guess what's biting your bait down there. Um, I know that these scup give a little tiny head shakes. And so I usually, if I sense little bites, I won't necessarily go and hook right away, even if it is a slow tug after those little tiny bites. Probably a scup swimming away with it, and I'd rather wait for a larger tug from a to tog. Some nice scup over here. So at this point I know there's fish down there. Um, I'm still going to use halved crabs because it's still I still feel there's a need for some juices to be coming out of the crabs to pull some of the fish over to the area. So spider crabs, they're really durable. They have a ton of meat in them. <clears throat> um, so I'm going to cut this crab in half, take the legs off. Um, I feel like with the spider crab, if you leave all the legs on there, they sort of, they can be a nuisance and sort of tangle around your line. So I chopped this one in half and I'm going to chuck that down there and see if a larger fish will take a go at this. Around with that all day. All right, here we go. Spider crab. They say, yeah, these things are, spider crabs are juicy. Tuck back up here to where I triangulated myself earlier. All right, right about here. I'm gonna check that. Oh, it fell off. I felt that. Oh man. Yep, crab's still on there. That was a small fish. Oh. oh no, he fell off. Let's see. He's back, he's back on it. He's back on it. See, they'll come back. Watch. Should come back. It's probably nibbling off the legs right now. That's a good fish right there. Probably a small keeper. Oh, it's a sea bass. Nice. Little bait stealers. So, ooh, sea bass are out of season, but this is one of the, the bycatch that you'll get. They are beautiful fish, but they're lucky. That feels like a tug. 
So when fishing from a kayak, as soon as you get a bite, you want to have your rod parallel to the water or closer to the water. So when you go to swing the rod to hook, you are immediately pulling Ooh. the fish away right. from any snags down there. Ooh. And it gives you a chance Chinner to start reeling down Let's on see. the fish. Ah, another female. Oh, no, it's a chinner. Nice. Keep a couple of these. Make sure check and see how big he is. So he is 17. Perfect. Good size. Alright, I'm going to bleed, bleed him out, put him in the uh, cooler. So I'm switching from a spider crab to this Asian shore crab. This is a very large one. Their bodies are generally shallower and have less meat on them. But I'm going to chuck this down there pretty much whole and see if I can't catch a larger tog. One of your claws off. Go. <clears throat> Get some juice in the water. So here you see a large thump and the line goes slack momentarily and then you see the rod just slowly sink down. That is when you set the hook on the fish. Whoa. Wow, that was surprising. <laughs> oh. Wow. I think that's a nice female. Oh, yep. Yeah. Scrappy little thing. Yeah, that's definitely a 19, ooh, about 19 inches or so. Very nice fish. Ow. Ooh, all right. That's a better one. Just trying to keep them off the bottom. Hopefully it's a male. Oh, he does not want to come up. Come on. Ooh. Ooh, that's a nice one. Wow. That's a, that's a nice one. I think that's a male. See a big white belly down there. Ooh, that is a nice one. Not huge, but it's going to be a nice, ooh, he's warm. It's going to be a nice little fish to eat. He is 18, no, that's 19 right there. That's a fair 19 inches. So I can keep one more. But yeah, look at that chin. It's like a superhero. All right, let's get this hook out. So you can see why you need to make sure the tips of your hooks are sharp, like this one's bent. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'll keep it and I'll show you um, in a close up with my other, ooh, with my other camera. But um, yeah, nice fish right there, 19 inches. So here's the hook right here I was just talking about. You can see the point is bent backwards. Yes, you can bend it back but it's better off just to change your hook out for a new one if you can. Finally, if you do get a bite, you wanna make sure your rod tip's somewhat close to the water, as close as you can, that you feel comfortable with. And then you'll feel a couple taps and hopefully a larger pull, and then you can do a nice firm sweep up. 
And obviously this sweep up hooks the fish and also pulls the fish immediately away from the rocks. So let's see if I can't hook one. All right, bites right there. They're about an inch or so. And then you get these bigger bites like this. They're about two to three inch stumps. You just give a good hook set and that's it. Like I said, you want to get right over the fish, pull them away from the structure. It's actually decent fish. Ooh, oh, that's a nice chinner right there. All right, I'm done for the day. Yeah, that's a nice chin man right there. So that's how you do it, boys and girls. Like I said, I'll You'll see a couple little thumps, like three inch little nibbles on there, or inch nibbles. Wait for those larger nibbles on there. You'll feel the poles get longer and longer and you could give a hook then. We're keeping him. We have our limit. All right, got him. Good, he wasn't going anywhere. Let's get this hook out of the mouth. There you go, nice to tug right there. Big male, not big, but Good size, so you got that big prominent chin on there. More squared off tail. Females have a rounded tail on the edges, so. All right, let's get this thing measured up. We'll see how big he is. He's not huge, but he's good. Uh, 19, 19 and three quarters, not bad. All right, we are done for the day. So nice final fish here. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. Um, caught three good size keeper uh, male fish and I let all the females go. Um, yeah, I just showed you basically what to look for as far as shoreline when you're fishing from your kayak. So you look for boulder fields, um, you can look for concrete walls, fish at the edges of jetties or if you see some eddies or um, slack water at the edges of um, obvious moving water you can fish there too in the spring and the fall i don't like to fish in water less than 10 feet um, i'll work my i'll start at 10 feet and sort of work my way deeper so it seems to work it hasn't failed me yet um, today we we're probably fishing in 10 to 15 feet of water uh, as soon as i i took three or four good um, turns on the handle and my bait was at the top so it, not bad. So, got a nice fish. This is the final one. Nice fish right there. So, all right, I'm gonna head in. Uh, I'm starting to get a little windy out, so it's still early. I fished for probably two hours or so. I caught my limit probably three or four times over. I caught plenty of keeper sized fish, but like I said, they're mostly female. So, all right, this is done and done with the kayak fishing. Um, I'm going to do some shore fishing and show you how to do that.